hundred years. Not many, but there is still enough to talk about a city that represents the thriving economic, political, and cultural life of a country. A city where numerous interests circulate, mainly because this city was a peaceful place like the citizens who inhabited it during the period of its creation, back when it wasn't capital yet. This is Tirana, the city located in the heart of Albania, lying between rolling hills and a friendly climate. This city offers unconditional love for its visitors in every season, a crossroad where you can find not only the people willing to offer the best of themselves, but also a rest stop from which, in a journey of only three hours, you have the chance to touch some of the attractions most famously associated with Albania. This is all thanks to the favorable geographic position that Tirana has, where the sun divides the mountains and the sea, which the city has in abundance. Today, Tirana has approximately one million inhabitants. Although a young city compared to others, it has a lot to say in architecture. From the Ottoman style that is present in the old building facades, to the fascist style of the 30s, then to an era of socialist realism, and finally, to the modern buildings that have invaded the skyline, the architecture reflects the historical periods that the city experienced. The castle of Tirana, located at the Muratoptani promenade, is an ancient symbol that reminds us of the existence of Tirana as an urban center. It is said that this type of field castle dates from the Byzantine period. Time after time, it functioned as a propeller for the rebirth of city life. In fact, the first mention in writing of the name Tirana dates back to 1418. A document from the Republic of Venice provides proof. Still, there is no precise explanation regarding the etymology of the word Tirana. There are sources that claim Tirana comes from the word Teranda, which the locals called Teranat, meaning the falls, because the area where the city is located today was formed by the falling rocks and debris from the surrounding mountains. While the other researchers believe that the name Tirana comes from the Tirkan castle, located in Mount Daiti, only a few meters away from the castle, in the old historic part of the city, lie the palaces of Toptanis, which were built in 1837 and belong to one of the most famous aristocratic families of the city. A document from the Republic of Venice, dating back to 1418, verifies this to be true. Still, the foundation of the city would come after almost two centuries. The honor of founding the city belonged to Suleiman Paj Bargini, a general in the Ottoman Empire, who in 1614, with a decree signed by the Sultan, laid the foundation of today's city. Initially, the city had a mosque, a Turkish bathhouse, a bakery, and a handful of inhabitants. It kept growing year after year, and it turned into one of the main trade centers in the central region of Albania. The city experienced a boom of prosperity when it was formalized as the capital of Albania in 1925. But the decision to turn it into the main center of political and economic developments in Albania belonged to Lushnia Congress, which declared Tirana the capital city in January of 1920. It should come as no surprise if you should see double-headed eagle in Signa at the entrance of Tirana, since Tirana is considered the capital of all Albanian-speaking territories in the Balkans. This is the moment where the construction of the modern city started. The first urban plans of Tirana date back to 1923. During the same period, many important buildings of influence were built. At the pedestrian road that leads to Tirana's castle, visitors can find some of the cultural and political institutions that represent the most treasured architecture of the city and in all of Albania. The National Theatre is located on Seremedin Se Toptani Road. For the first time in 1945, the theatre opened its doors. 
They have premiered over 500 Albanian and foreign dramas. At the upper side of the castle, on the side of George Bush Road, in the perfectly landscaped front lawns, lies the Parliament of Albania, built in 1924, which first served as a constitutional assembly. Next to the Parliament building, where the most important legal decisions are made, it is the Academy of Sciences, on the stairs of which King Zog and Queen Geraldine greeted citizens of Tirana on their wedding day, April 27, 1938. On George Bush Road, at the end of the stony pedestrian road, is where the Bridge of Tabak is located which has acquired the status of a protected cultural monument. The bridge was built in the 17th century and today is recognized as one of the landmarks of the city. The 1930s marked the architectural boom of the city. These catalog the formative years that shaped Tirana of today. The Boulevard de Shmore de Combit was built in 1930, at first named Zogui Par, until the mid-40s, when it bore the name that it has today. This four-kilometer-long boulevard is divided into two segments. In the 50s, part of the boulevard that connected Skanderbeg Square with the train station was named Stalin to honor the Soviet dictator, while now it has been renamed to King Zog I once again. On the boulevard de Schmore de Combit, there are the headquarters of some of the most important buildings which qualify Tirana as one of the must-see cities of Albania. At the same location, you can find the complex of ministries, built in the 30s and fashioned after Italian influences. It is very simple to understand why they were built in the Italian style. Well, that is because the Albanian kingdom had a strong connection with Italy in these years. The municipality of Tirana follows the same style. A little bit further is the prime minister's office. This three-story facility was designed and built by the Italian architect from Florence, Gerardo Bosio. Originally, this building, where the glorified style is apparent, served as a house of the fascists. Since the mid-40s until the end of the Second World War, the building became the headquarter of the Albanian government, which remains as such today. It is the same Gerardo Bosio, who also designed and built the square where the buildings of the rector of the University of Tirana Polytechnical University and University of Arts are now located. The same person who in 1939 wrote down the design of the Albanian National Stadium, which bears the name Cemal Stafa, an Albanian resistance hero during the War of National Liberation. Italian architects Gerardo Bosio initial sketches of the stadium were an elliptical shaped structure that would be covered in marble. It was also planned to be constructed as an Olympic stadium. One of the curiosities that accompanies this stadium is that the first stone of its foundation was set by Galeazzo Ciano, the foreign minister of fascist Italy, who at the same time happened to be Benito Mussolini's son-in-law. In the fiery atmosphere of the stadium, the Albanian national football team, also known as the Red and Black Eagles, holds its matches. On the boulevard de Shmore de Combit, you can also stop by the Art Gallery, where you can enjoy the pavilion of the Gallery on Albanian Socialist Realism, where you can also find nearly 3,200 works of art created by Albanian and foreign artists alike. If you find you are tired from a long day of touring or strolling around, you can enjoy coffee, lunch or dinner as you see fit in one of the many restaurants and bars with picturesque scenes of Tirana. Taiwan was reconstructed in the early 2000s on what was once known as Bar Park Rinia, the people's place of entertainment. But the true emblems of Tirana are at Tembe Mosque and the Clock Tower. These two monuments have stood next to each other for centuries, and for those who would like to have a piece of Tirana with them, can find these monuments personified in souvenirs that symbolize the city. A Tembe Mosque best represents the Islamic tradition found in Tirana. Mulai Bey, a wealthy citizen of Tirana at the time, laid the foundation for the mosque in 1791. However, the work is thought to have been finalized in the years 1830-1831, 
by a tembe son who built the porch of the main entrance with colossal columns up to the ceilings, which was decorated with paintings. The clock tower dates back from the same period. It was built in 1822. It is 35 meters high, has a 90-step spiral staircase, and from here you can gaze clearly into the distance, overlooking the panoramic views of the city center. Until 1970s, it was the highest building in Tirana. Clock Tower is also the emblem of the municipality of Tirana. But no city is complete without its square. Skanderbeg Square is named after the national hero of Albania. This plaza, which serves as a gathering place among residents, was created by the famous Italian architects of the Mussolini period, Florestano de Fausto and Armando Brassini. Skanderbeg Monument, built in 1968, is the work of renewed Albanian sculptor Odisse Pascali, and it was unveiled on the 500th anniversary of the death of the national hero. Next to the monument are two of the most cultural institutions that do not belong only to Tirana. The National Museum is an overview of the history of Albania from antiquity to the modern era. Here you can find the weapon that was used to shoot Benito Mussolini after he was hanged along with his mistress, Clara Petacci. It is said that Walter Audisio, Partisan commander who took responsibility for the execution of Mussolini, donated the weapon to the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Albania in 1957 as a sign of appreciation for the heroic struggle of the Albanian people against the fascist occupation. The National Museum was built in 1981, and the front fresco is titled Albania. Even in Skanderbeg Square, there is room for an institution like the National Theatre of Opera and Ballet. Even here, there is a curiosity that accompanies the building where the institution is located. This is because the first stone of its foundation was set in 1959 by Nikita Khrushchev, the first secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. Tirana is a city of peace and religious harmony. It is a city where believers celebrate holidays together without hostility towards one another. This is also the reason why in 1925 the Bektashi believers chose Tirana as the center of their religion, and still today, the Bektashi headquarter is in Tirana. Simultaneously, you can find other religious centers to be equally as present in the city life. The Cathedral of St. Paul is the largest facility for Catholic believers in Tirana, which has noteworthy architecture and interior design. You can also find the peaceful Orthodox Church, Resurrection of Christ, in Tirana, which was built recently. Visitors are welcome to gaze at the interior decoration. Therefore, Tirana, besides being a center for culture and politics, is also one of the cities with the most developed and modern hotels in Albania. Every visitor who wants to spend a night in the capital can find a lot of alternatives from the cheapest to the most expensive ones. Hotel Tirana, or the 15 stories, as it is commonly known because of the number of floors, it is located in the center of Tirana. Until a few years ago, the hotel, which was built in the 70s, was the highest building in the Albanian capital. Apart from the socialist-style architecture and the high-level service, visitors can, at any hour of the day and from the balcony of the hotel, overlook upon the remarkable views in the city of Tirana.
The Rogner Hotel on the Boulevard de Schmar de Combit is another preferred high-class hotel in the area. This is the preferred hotel of the Albanian elite, where you can have a drink in its interior backyard, a true oasis of tranquility. Or you can choose Sheraton Hotel and spend the evening in its presidential suite, where stars like David Beckham, Cristiano Ronaldo or Rita Ora have stayed. Or perhaps Jeco Imperial Hotel, where the suites have a Baroque-era style interior and where you can spend an unforgettable evening. Tirana is an easily walkable city. Without having to walk long distances, visitors have the opportunity within one day to visit a variety of places. If you are looking for a subway or metro, you will not find them here, since you do not need them. This is because by foot you can navigate the distances from one place to another. The National Park of Tirana, located in the south of the city, is an avenue that should not be missed. Here lie the lungs of Tirana, where the residents of the city spend their afternoons taking long strolls. Only a few minutes away, within walking distance, you have the opportunity to visit the Botanical Garden of Tirana, where you can find rare species of the Albanian flora and fauna, and also those of Europe. There are several ways to climb the mountain. You can choose to travel by car, or if you prefer, you may take the cable car up the mountain. The views are equally as impressive. Or find Petrella and climb its castle, where the natural and historical backgrounds interwine gracefully. You can also spend the afternoon going to the cinema. Tirana is a city where innovation and tradition have an extraordinary and unanticipated union. The Agimi movie theater was built in the 50s. This is the only movie theater that survived the socialist period and is also considered as a point of contact with nostalgia. Besides the old cinemas, there are also the modern ones. The Millennium Movie Theatre, one of the first modern cinemas built in the capital, can be found at the Tirana Promenade. With the latest technology on its big screen, one has a chance to enjoy the latest movies right in the city centre. Another option is the Imperial Cinemas Network, which contains five cinemas and it has the latest films in circulation. In the biggest mall of the country, TEG, Cineplex Movie Theater has seven halls and provides for public entertainment with the most recent and best film releases playing. An opportunity you should not disregard is a visit to the villa of the former dictator Enver Hoxha, a two-story building in the heart of the neighborhood of the former bloc. Although the inside is not open to the visitors, one can take pictures from the outside. Formerly, this place was isolated from the city residents. This is because the elite communist leaders lived there. Today, this is one of the places most frequented by Tirana youth, where the trendy and expensive bars populate the neighborhood. A few meters away from the dictator's villa, where the silence now reigns, facing the Albanian prime minister buildings, lays the building of the National Assembly, once the building for the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Albania. Thereby lies the tall skyscrapers built by the Soviets in the 50s, at the time of a great friendship between the two countries. In Tirana, you can find different cuisines, from Italian to Oriental, making sure to satisfy all tastes. 
Padam Boutique Hotel is a villa where you can find an astounding restaurant that offers refined French cuisine, which can be found just steps away from the boulevard de Schmore de Combit, on the road Pope John Paul. ABBA 21st is located on the 21st floor of ABBA Business Center. In this restaurant, the dishes prepared are comparable to the prestigious gourmet restaurant, where the Kobe beef from Japan is important, and there are precisely 750 varieties of wine. All these sensations under the city lights. If you are in the mood for a weekend of round-the-clock activities, here you will find a fiery hot nightlife in a variety of nightclubs and bars. Cavaliero Club is located to the western exit of Tirana. Here, every weekend, it's like a live concert, where you can enjoy Albanian music, but also foreign music as well, interpreted by the best local singers. If you want something quieter, you can choose Fashion Club in downtown Tirana. Or you can enjoy a cocktail at Colonial Café, prepared by the exceptional bartenders. This is where the momentum of Tirana City invites you to join its youthful spirit. The city that has had a difficult gestation, but today is right on the cusp of inviting a new reality with an abundance of discoveries yet to be made. <laughs>